Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss significant figures or significant digits. We'll answer the question, what are they? And then we're going to talk about some examples of how we determine how many significant digits a number has. And then finally, we'll conclude the video with doing some examples of calculations, so addition and subtraction, and multiplication and division, and ultimately how we determine how many significant digits our final answer will have. So to illustrate why significant digits can be important, let's use a hypothetical example. Let's say you have a friend and you tell them, hold your breath, and I'm going to count how many seconds you can hold your breath for. So they start holding their breath, and you start counting in seconds. One, two, three, and so on and so forth. And let's suppose that you get to somewhere between 20 and 21 seconds. So just after 20 seconds, they have to take a breath. Okay. So would it be correct, logically speaking, to say that your friend held their breath for 20.058347 whatever seconds? Well, obviously not. There is no way, no conceivable way that you could determine with accuracy how many seconds they were holding their breath for to that many decimal places. Okay. Now you might be able to say it was between 20 and 21 seconds, uh, but you could not say to however many decimal places I said five decimal places, that's impossible. So most of those decimal places are not known accurately. And so with significant digits, I would be able to say, well, I know it's between 20 and 21, so I could estimate one decimal place after that. I could say maybe 20.5 seconds. So how do we determine how many significant digits a number has? Well, we can do it one of two ways. Either we can memorize all these rules, and it becomes really challenging because that relies on you memorizing the rules and remembering all them and being able to apply them correctly, or we can use what's called the box dot method. This is a foolproof method that works for every single question you could get. So I've got a number here, 0 0.00150690. In the box dot method, I want to draw a box around all non-zero digits. What are non-zero digits? Well, I see a 1, a 5. There is a 0 next, but then there's a 6 and a 9. So the first step is I'm going to draw a box around all those numbers, from the first non-zero digit to the last one. So from the 1 to the 9, just like that. And so if that dot is present, I'm going to draw a box around all the trailing zeros. That is, all the zeros that trail that first box. But that's only if a dot is present. Okay. So those two zeros are trailing and Therefore, I'm going to box those. And so in total, this number has seven significant digits, okay, or seven significant figures. And again, all I did is I first drew a box around all the non-zero digits, from the first one to the final one, from the one to the nine. And then if a dot or if a decimal point is present, then I'm going to put a box around all the zeros that trail the first box. If there's no decimal point present, you don't have to worry about that. Pretty much you're only worrying about the first step, and then you just count the number of digits. So let's apply this, and I'll do some examples. How many significant digits are in each of the following measurements? Okay. So what I would do is draw a box around all the non-zero digits. Well, that would be a, a box from the 3 to the 1. Right Now there's two zeros in between, they just get kind of caught up in that box. Well, that's all there is, so that means there's four significant digits. Now here's a challenging one. We've got 0 0.0320 cubic meters. How many significant digits do we have here? Well, the first step would be to draw a box around all the non-zero digits. Well, there's a 3 and a 2 right next to each other. So my first box would just include the 3 and the 2. right? But there's a dot, there's a decimal point. So if there's a decimal point, I then have to draw a box around all the zeros that trail the first box. Well, there's only one zero that trails the first box. First box being the three and the two, that last zero trails the first box. And so in total, I have that three, the two, and the last zero. And so in that number, there are three significant digits. Now, when you have scientific notation, like this one right here. That's any time you have some number times 10 to some exponent. We always forget the 10 to the exponent. Okay, Don't worry about that. All I'm worried about is the 6.4. Okay, In this case, I'm going to put a box around all 
non-zero numbers, but that's just the six and the four, and then there's nothing else. So that one is gonna be two significant digits. And so the key there is that we're ignoring the 10 to the fourth, okay? The last one is 560 kilograms. So I'm gonna draw a box around the non-zero digits. That's the five and the six. Is there a decimal point? No, there's no dot, so I'm done. So that first box with the five and the six, that's it. So there's only two significant figures in that number. So really the only time you're gonna to have to worry about trailing zeros is when you have that decimal point. And just like in the third one right there, 0 0.0320, when there's that decimal point or that dot, you then draw a box around all the trailing zeros after the first box. So some more examples. First we have 5,600 milliliters. We would first draw a box around the non-zero numbers. That's just the five and the six. Is there a dot? Nope, so we're done. So just the five and the six are significant, so only two significant figures. Now, the next one looks similar, but it's different. We have 5,600 dot milliliters. So in this example, they put a decimal point after the number. It turns out you can make all the digits, even the zeros, significant just by adding a dot at the end. So let's apply the same rules. Put a box around all the non-zero digits. So we'd have a box around the five and the six. Is there a dot? Yes. So now we have to box all the trailing zeros after the first box. So that means th both of those zeros become significant because they trail that first box. And so that makes all four of those digits significant. Now let's look at some example problems where we're determining how many significant figures the answer to an addition or subtraction problem will have or for multiplication and division. So in this first example, we're adding 89.349 and 1.1. To understand this, you need to ask yourself how many digits each number has after the decimal point. 89.349 has three, the three, four, and nine. 1.1 only has one, it's just the one. And so my final answer is just gonna have whichever one has the smallest number. So my final answer will have one digit after the decimal point, not three. It'll just have one, because that's the smaller. So you would just punch this into the calculator and get 90.449. However, because I've determined that my final answer can have only one number after the decimal point, I have to round 90.449 to just 90.4, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's do the subtraction problem, and we're gonna see that it works the exact same way. Okay, I'm gonna subtract 3.70 minus 2.9150. Now that first number, 3.70, has two digits after the decimal point, whereas the second one has four digits, okay? I go with the smaller one. So my final answer can only have two digits after the decimal point. Now when I punch this into the calculator, I get 0 0.7850. So because my final answer can only have two digits after the decimal point, I would have to round this to the hundredths place. And so the five would cause the eight to round up. And so my final answer only has two digits after, it'd be 0 0.79. Okay, that's how you deal with addition and subtraction. It's, it has to do with the numbers after the decimal point, okay, the number of numbers, that is. When you're dealing with multiplication and division, it's a little bit easier, I think. All you do now is you look at whichever one has the smallest number of total significant figures. Multiplication and division has nothing to do with the number of decimal places, just the total number of significant digits in each number. So we have 4.51 times 3.6666. And when you punch this into the calculator, you get that number. Now, how many significant digits does 4.51 have? Well, it has three significant digits, whereas the 3.6666 has five. And so because the two numbers being multiplied have three and five significant digits, your final answer can only have three significant digits, the smaller one. So that number I'm forced to round to 16.5, okay? It wouldn't have five significant digits, it would have to have three, always the smaller one. Here's a division problem, again, working the exact same way. 6.8 divided by 112.04. How many significant digits did the first number have? Two, the six and the eight. The last one, the 112.04, has five. 
Therefore, when I punch this into the calculator, I'm forced to round this decimal to two significant digits, okay? Because the 6.8 has two. And I have to go with the smaller one, so it would not be five. And so when I round this to two significant digits, I get 0 0.061. Okay, that second six in the number causes the zero that I'm pointing to, there with the arrow, to round up. So that is how we deal with operations, okay? And that's an introduction to significant digits. Hopefully it made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.